What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Links and Locks podcast, the DFS edition. I'm Jason Sobel from Golf Bet. He's Len Hochberg from Rotowire. And yes, it is a very special week, the 122nd U.S. Open Championship. I am coming to you live from the country club in Brookline, Massachusetts. Okay, I'm coming to you live from a hotel room five minutes away from the country club. I, I lied a little bit. I, I left the course a couple minutes ago. Uh, don't hate me for that, but it's a, it's a lovely know. hotel room. It's a lovely Thank room. You. Thank you. Um, look, it's uh, it's going to be a great week. I took a couple of spins around the course today, Len. Uh, we're speaking here on Monday afternoon, and uh, this place is legit. Uh, this place looks like a U.S. Open golf course. Some of the runoff areas are going to be dastardly. It, it's windy and it's hot. And if this keeps up, which it seems like it, it should, maybe the weekend gets a little bit cooler, but it's going to get baked out. It's going to get crusty. It's going to get exactly the way we like having a U.S. Open golf course. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I can't speak to it the way you can being there, but, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, I take away is that it's it's not like Torrey Pines last year. It's not uber long. I think it lets some other guys into the mix uh, this time around, and it really sounds like, you can't bludgeon your way through this golf course that if you miss the fairway, um, you're going to have trouble getting on those small greens. So really um, accuracy more than distance and conservative play and par and is a good score. And um, you know, and, and tell me if, if you see things differently. No, I agree with you. I have a couple of guys uh, within my top five and a few more in the top 10 this week, guys we'll be talking about as we start making our, DFS lineup and, and going through all the salaries here that are not the longest hitters, but guys that I really like this week. So uh, we've seen it the last six years. I mean, we've had champions of Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka twice, Gary Woodland, Bryson DeChambeau, and John Rob. Uh, it's, it's like the, the, the game's all arm wrestling team. If you want to put them together like that, these, these are the guys that are strong, powerful. I think they have an advantage Len off the tee because they hit it a long way but even more of an advantage in the rough. Essentially, everyone's going to miss, miss fairways. You'd rather miss 320 from the tee than 280 from the tee. And then who's got a better chance of getting it to the green? Some guy who's 5'6", 130, and is trying to swing as hard as he can, or a guy like John Rahm, who has big forearms, can launch it out of their athletic swing. That's why these guys have had an advantage. But you're right. I don't know if it necessarily holds true at this golf course. If there's a comp course for the country club, it, it reminds me just a little bit of Marion, another old school Northeast cor- uh, golf course that hosted this event nine years ago. Of course, Justin Rose is the winner that uh, I remember going into that one. We we're all talking about, all right, this is the U S open where 12, 14 under is going to win it. I believe Justin Rose was either even par or one under for the week. And, and, and the only guy up there. So um, I, I could very well see something like that this week. I've heard from a few caddies already saying, even par is really good. I, I put me in the clubhouse right now at even par. I'll take my chances. You know, I saw an interview with Gil Hans. He's been in one or two places on our TVs uh, this week. Uh, and he, he addressed Bryson DeChambeau at, uh, at Wingfoot, how he just hit it as far as he could. And he didn't care that it went in the rough. And, and Hans said, the difference here is that there's not only is there the rough, but then there is what thigh high, waist high fescue. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that will, that will wrap around your club and you won't be able to, he said, you can't do what Bryson DeChambeau did at Wingfoot at, uh, Brookline. And, and also secondly, and you could speak to this is that from what I'm hearing, if you're in the rough, you're not going to be able to stop the ball on the green. The greens are small. They will roll off. You won't be able to control the ball. You will a little bit from the fairway. But once you're in the rough, you're going to have trouble getting the ball to stay on the green. Yeah, uh, these greens are quick. They're small, like you said. There are some runoff areas. There's some false fronts where you're going to see some shots land this week. You go, wow, that's pretty good shots, about eight feet below the hole. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, just stay there. No, don't. And the ball starts trickling and trickling. And next thing you know, it picks up speed. And a player is going to be 50 yards down the fairway, chipping straight uphill to the same shot that he just had before that right. you're going to see it. You're, you're going to see guys looking like Tyrrell Hatton throughout the entire week, slam their clubs down, mutter into themselves guys who have never cursed before 
uh, on a live mic are going to get caught cursing out there because uh, they're going to have some plays that they, they thought it was pretty good. It looked like it was right near the hole and all of a sudden comes rolling right back to their feet. So let's get right into it. We're looking at things from a DFS perspective for this week's U S open Scotty Scheffler, even though he's not the favorite in the betting marketplace, he is 11, three on DraftKings, 400 more than Justin Thomas followed by John Rahm, Rory McIlroy, Cameron Smith, and Colin Morikawa rounds out the five figured players, a half dozen of them this week. Who do you like from that set? Yeah, I, I you know, Scheffler has to be the top guy. Uh, you know, maybe that's just, uh, I, I don't know why I'm saying it. it just seems like he, he deserves it. He should be. I'm not sure why he, what, what happened to him in the betting market, why he's like third or, or fourth now. Uh, not like he's playing terrible. Um, but anyway, uh, that said, uh, well, probably sounds silly now, but I'm not going to pick Scotty Scheffler, but I do like Justin Thomas and Rory McIlroy both. Um, in my rankings, I had, I did have Scheffler first. He just should be there. That uh, doesn't mean I think he's going to win. But I had Justin Thomas second, Rory McIlroy third. This was before Sunday at the Canadian Open. Maybe I'd flip-flop the two of them now. Um, they're both playing very well, as we saw again yesterday. Uh, they can adjust to this course. They both hit the ball a long way, but I think they're smart players. They will club down. They will figure it out. Rory, very good with his wedge yesterday. These guys are just playing very well right now um, and a little bit more favorably priced than Scotty Scheffler. And John Rahm, I, I think, would be the one guy I would fade the most, however ridiculous that sounds. He just has not been as good as the other guys. Yeah, I, I hate to mirror everything you're saying there, but I'm completely with you on that, Len. I've got JT and Rory as the two players inside my top five from this group of players. And look, maybe there's some recency bias in here. The two of them have been playing really well. They were going toe to toe down the back stretch at the RBC Canadian Open this past weekend on Sunday. So, yeah, it's hard not to like either of these guys, uh, both coming in on heaters, both feeling very confident, both also leaders in the game. I mean, let's not underestimate how Rory McIlroy being a leader and really wanting to sort of put the tour on his shoulders uh, impacted how he played this past weekend. So I, I think there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, look, I, I've got, let's see. I think I've got Scheffler just above Rom on my list, followed by Morikawa. Although if I'm, if I'm making a DFS specific list, I might have Morikawa at that, uh, that price discount above them a little bit. I might have a little more Morikawa than either of those two, but it, it's, it's very much along the same lines of what you're saying. If I'm, if I'm paying up, I'm paying up for JT or Rory, and I'm probably not paying up a whole lot. I think there's a lot of good value in the second and third tier. And I, I, I'm just going to see myself making a lot of, a lot of those steady lineups with six guys who look really good, as opposed to um, paying way up and then trying to find some flyers towards the bottom. That usually doesn't work out. We say that for every major championship. Mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, all these, look at all these good players who are in the eight thousands and seven thousands. And usually it doesn't work out that way. So let's get to the nine thousands. Starting with Victor Hovland at 9,700, Xander Shoffley, Jordan Spieth, Dustin Johnson, Will Zalatoris, Patrick Cantley, Hideki Matsuyama, and Shane Lowry. Again, a lot of good players, and you can argue that they're not too far off from the guys in the five figures, and you're getting these guys at a discounted price as well. Yeah, there are a few guys here. Uh, and I, 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 to piggyback on what you were saying, I, you know, I didn't see a real sweet spot in the 8,000s or 7,000s or maybe in the low eights, but it wasn't really an area that I liked so many guys and, and like we struggle with so many weeks, mm -hmm. but in this group, um, not big on Victor Hovland. He nope. still has not never had a top 10 in, in a major. Uh, that's gotta be something he's been in close to 10 of them by now. Uh, I really like Xander Shoffley a lot and uh, nice to see him a little bit lower and not in the tens. Um, you know, I looked at his, first of all, he's never finished lower than seventh in the U.S. Open. He's only been in five, but that is just insane consistency to be there every year at this core, at this type of course. Um, he has not been much discussed by us and not been discussed so much on Sundays late in the afternoon this year. Um, but I looked at his numbers. He is statistically better than his results. 
He's really been driving the ball very well, very long, pretty straight, just what you need this week. So I do like him. Um, Will Zalatoris, hard not to like him. He's in the top five, six, seven of every major. Uh, I think those are the two guys in the 9,000s who I like the most, and maybe Jordan Spieth third. Yeah, I feel like, Len, it's easier for me to tell you who I don't like in the 9,000s than who I do. I probably won't have much Victor Hovland. I just look, again, comes down to the fact he's he's the worst chipper on the PGA Tour this season. I, he's No one's worse than him around the greens. I, you're going to miss greens. It's a U.S. Open. It's thick rough around there. Maybe that levels the playing field. I've heard that theory uh, bandied about, and I, I can understand that. But look, it's really hard around the greens. He's not good around the greens. I, I'm not playing him. And, and I love Victor's game. I love everything else about the rest of his game. And Dustin Johnson's the other guy that just, who knows where his head is right now. Um, you know, certainly it's uh, thinking about uh, the dollar signs that he's getting from live golf. I, I just can't imagine he's fully invested in this tournament right now. I, I like everybody else. The two that I will mention that I really like, especially the prices. Len, we're not far from Patrick Cantley being third or fourth on the board. And this week he is 10, 11, 12. He's 12th on the board. Uh, Patrick Cantley is better than a guy who should be 12th. 9,200 is a fantastic discounted price on Patrick Cantley. I do think ownership might be suppressed a little bit just by people being a little scared off. His four worst finishes in the last year have been at the Players' Championship and three majors. He has not played well at the big events. You have to ask yourself, is it because he can't play well at the big events? Or is it something that's going to turn around? I, I happen to think the latter. I, I'm a big Patrick Cantley fan. I, I think the U.S. Open suits his game. I'm going to go back to that well because I liked him at the Masters. I liked him a little bit at the PGA Championship. I, I feel like if I jump off him now, it's going to come back to bite me. I, I think that's a really good price for him. And then one of my favorite plays on the board, and I'll, I, I might have him in every lineup that I've made so far. He's my uh, favorite outright selection, Shane Lowry at 9,000. We've talked about how much Shane has gotten out of his game so far this year. No finishes worse than 35th place in 12 starts in 2022. And it's the all-round game. He's hitting it well off the tee. The approach game is good. Around the greens is actually not great, although he's got really good hands, usually a very good chipper of the golf ball, putting pretty well like everything about Shane Lowry, other than maybe the fact that he's playing with Phil Mickelson and Louis Oosten in you the about first that. two rounds. I was just going to ask you about yeah. that because that's can't, he can't be happy about that. You know, I was wondering, and, and Michael Collins and I were discussing this on Sirius XM PGA tour radio today. And I, maybe there's like some lingering booze. And I, I, I mean that B O O S not B O O Z E, although it could be either one, but some, some lingering uh, effect of, you know, the fans getting on the other two guys just a little bit. Um, and, and he's got, got get some of the shrapnel uh, thrown his way, but I, I don't, really don't think so. I think if anything, look, Boston's a very Irish town. He's an Irishman. I, I think he's going to have a lot of people cheering for him, maybe even more so than usual. Hey, there's the one guy in that group that stayed true to the PGA tour. Let's root for that guy. And so I can see Shane Lowry having a lot of support this week. Phil, Phil did a great job on his news conference complimenting the Boston fans as being the best fans in the, uh, the universe, the Milky Way, the <laughs> to something. They were, he just could, he couldn't be a more effusive in his praise of the, in the, getting out in front of the situation there. So good, good for him on that. Yeah, Phil, uh, Phil did a lot of praising in his press conference today. So um, let's get to the 8,000s here. Joaquin Neiman. Cameron Young, Brooks Kepka, Billy Horschel, Matt Fitzpatrick, Daniel Berger, Sam Burns, Tony Finau, Max Homa, Tyrrell Hatton. Um, I, I hope you have a lot of plays here, but I, I'm going to speak for a little while about this because I, I, I there is a big major sweet spot for me at some point in this range. Yeah, and for me too, uh, if there is a sweet spot anywhere, it's in the lower eights. Mm. um you mm. know I, I, it's matt fitzpatrick and mm. it really has nothing to do with winning the 2013 usm although i heard he's staying with the same family that okay. he stayed with 
when he won and he's stayed friends with them and he's come back to visit. So he's maybe going to be in a comfortable place and his parents are in town, his brother's in town. So he might have a good support group. Um, and maybe he, he won the USM because he plays well at this type of course. Um, so I do like him at 85. He's also playing pretty well. He did sort of fade at the RBC Canadian uh, didn't keep up with the other guys, but I like him. You know, I like Burns and I like Max Homa. They are at this type of course, we don't want any cowboys. Uh, you know, we they're not reckless players. Max Home is a pretty conservative player. We know we see him play well on tough courses for a few years now. So those are three guys in, in the in the eights that I like best of all. And now I uh, hand the mic to you. Yeah, you're kind of on the right scent that I'm I'm looking at as well. Let's see the top of the range. I I'll throw in one one quick note about Cameron Young. I think a lot of people are still going, oh, look, I like him. He's been really good. But, I mean, he's a rookie. This is a U.S. Open. He's a Northeast guy. He's shown that this, this is the perfect kind of golf course for Cameron Young. I, don't be scared. Don't be scared if you're just looking at it like, well, we've got to go with the guys that have been there, done that. He is he's a very good player. That said, I'm getting 8,500 with Fitzpatrick, just like you said. And, and, again, it's not just, oh, well, he won here nine years ago, U.S. Amateur. Well, Yes, I mean, he's one of the few players that has played a competitive event on this golf course, but also plays his best golf on tough courses where the score is closer in relation to par, the winning score. And then also the fact that he is second. Rory just overtook him this past weekend, but Matt Fitzpatrick was first. He's now second in strokes gain total. There's not really a better barometer of who's playing the best golf in the world right now than strokes gain total, and Fitzpatrick is uh, doing that very well. Daniel Berger, I love this week. Berger is a guy that I'm not sure if he still does it, but for a long time in his career would come up to New England and work on his game throughout the summer. He loves playing golf up here. He was second at the Travelers, lost in a playoff to Jordan Speed, that famous rake throwing uh, a few years ago. But Berger's a guy I love. Look, Sam Burns is a top 10 player in the world. You're getting him at less than the average salary per player on DraftKings. I mean, that is unbelievable. I, I don't even love Sam Burns this, this week. I like him a lot, but that that price is I, I look. I, if I'm Sam Burns, I post that on the refrigerator this week, and I keep looking at it like, really, I'm below average as far as price. And I get it. I get the dynamic pricing they do for major championships. They're enticing you to go down the board, but that, that's a great price for Burns. Tony Finau has come alive, yeah. And the U.S. Open is a great Tony Finau type of event. Eighty two hundred. Love it. Max Homa has not played his best golf at major championships, but he was 13th at the PGA championship last month. And it, it, you can almost read it on his face. He looks like he's becoming more confident in himself mm. every single week. And I like Homa a lot this week as well. Len. Yeah. Burns up. Burns also coming off his best major ever. Another yeah. guy who had been not playing well in the majors. And I just think that's like, younger guys maturing uh maybe that's the next progression they do well in regular tournaments and they start to do well in majors so i see a, a parallel between burns in homa in that regard all right let's get down to the seven thousands and just so i don't sound like i like everybody out there i don't like that many guys here in the seven thousand so I'll, I'll come out and say that to start yeah there are a few guys i'm looking at guys here i just want guys who are going to get the ball in the fairway i want guys who are going to make the cut i mean some people might say that's a little bit too soon to just be looking to make the cut but i'll, I'll quickly name four or five or six guys that i i think are conservative players and can get to the weekend here and then hope for the best tommy fleetwood 7700 sung jm 7600 uh, Webb Simpson, uh, I kind of like him a lot now that the course mm. is shorter at 7,400. He had the best round of the entire PGA uh, that Saturday, 65. You know, he's only played nine tournaments all season. He was injured. Uh, he seems to be healthy now. He was 20th at the PGA. I think this is a course that he can he can play on. Tom Hoagie, 7,300. Russell Henley, we know how straight he hits the ball, 7,300. And uh, probably go back up to Keegan Bradley at 7,500. The bunch of guys in here probably get them all in my lineup in my lineups in some fashion. Yeah, I, I like some of those names there. I, I'll start the 7,000s with Aaron Wise at 7,800. Look, I've been on him the entire year. He finished runner-up in his last start at the Memorial Tournament. I'm probably not going to jump off now. He's a he's a very very good young player, and I, I don't think he 
still gets enough credit and is uh, he's starting to get priced up just a little bit, but I still think he's uh, he's a guy to watch it and he can play well at this event, really any event, but uh, Sung J M 7,600. He's been forgotten a little bit. I remember Sung J M is a guy that we're used to seeing him priced up even at a major where, Hey, you know, the, the pricing is a little bit different. 7,600 is a very good number for Sung J. I like Keegan Bradley. I'm just a little worried about the, the hometown pressure that he's feeling internally. Uh, Webb Simpson, you almost talked me into him there. I, I wasn't thinking much about Webb, but I do like everything you're saying about him there. And then I'll go back to the well with a guy that I really liked last week. And I mean, could have shot a 57 on Sunday. It wasn't that far from it. Justin Rose shot a 60 with three bogeys. That's just stupid. Uh, you know, like, I, hey, uh, not even mad about that, I guess. Although a 57 would have been nice. But yeah, Justin Rose, again, I, I mentioned it earlier. It's sort of the convergence of everything you want in a player where Justin Rose coming off a really good final round. We know he's hitting it good right now. Plus, if the country club reminds me of one course, look at first blush. Hey, what does it remind you of? I look at Marion and I say, hey, I, I can see some similarities. Justin Rose was more in his prime nine years ago. I get that. But look, he won there. He can do some damage at this one as well. All right, we get down to the 6,000s, looking for some bargains. There are also some big names here. And there are some big names, not just at 69, 68, 6,700. But if you really want to go down the list, Len, you can find high-ranked amateurs. You can find PGA Tour players who are at 6,000. So I, I would say essentially shop around. If you're looking for a guy to sort of squeeze into the end of your lineup, because you've got a guy, a lot of guys at the top that you like, you can find players who are very good, viable professional golfers that you can throw in there as opposed to just, oh, here's some qualifier guy that I've never heard of. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You know, we, we only get 60 and ties make the cut uh, this week. So it's even a little fewer. So, so it's a little bit more challenging. But there are some guys here. Um, I don't have a ton of names here. I'm not going to go near Phil at 6,900. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't check his DraftKings price uh, before <laughs> heading out for for little for for Thursday morning. But I do like another 6,900, and that is Kevin Kisner. Normally, just distance distanced out of competing in so many U.S. Opens and stuff. This is a little bit shorter track. Although I think he did make a cut last year at Torrey Pines, even. Um, you know, another guy, we, we, we want to get the ball in the fairway. That is going to be, I think more important than distance. Even if you're 20 or 30 yards back, being in the fairway is better. He will do that $6,900. I expect him to make it to the weekend. And another guy, maybe, maybe I'm looking at more veteran guys, more conservative guys, Stuart sink. This is like his 85th major. He makes the cut in most of them in two thirds. In fact, he's made the cut in 75% of his U S opens 15 of 21. Um, you know, I just think he can figure out a way to get to the weekend. And, and I, well, I'll just go all the way to the bottom because I have my, my under 6,500 special. And this uh -huh. one is way down at 6,000. I, I don't know if I'm going to play this guy, but Keita Nakajima, the world number one amateur is 6,000. I just think that's too low. He's like 240th or 250th in the world. And I know people are now thinking, yeah, Hockberg said the same thing about Takumi Kanaya. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's just somebody to look at. He he missed the cut at the Masters, but he was close. But he was 41st at the Sony and 28th at the Zozo last year. So he's made some PGA Tour cuts, this guy, Nakajima, at 6,000. All right, I'm going to give you two names off the top. Then I'm going to run through a, a few others, and you'll see where I, I've got a little trend here. But Scott Stallings, I'm not sure another PGA Tour player was as thrilled to qualify for this event through final qualifying then Scott Stallings. Usually we see all these feel good stories or, you know, the guy that's got six kids under the age of 10 and, you know, had sold his golf clubs last year and decided to give it one last chance and made it through qualifying. His whole family is going to come in. You're like, Whoa, what a great start. Scott Stallings is like, Hey man, I, I grew up in Massachusetts. I, you know, I've got a lot of families still there. I, you don't get a major championship in your home state very often. And so I wanted to come back and, and play in this thing. And so, he got in and, and I think it's going to work for him. I mean, we talk about having big, strong guys needed to hit.
hit the ball out of this thick rough, Stallings is as strong as they come. I mean, he everyone talks about a Brooks Kepka or Bryson DeChambeau, you know, on that arm wrestling team, John Rom, but uh, Scott Stallings is a a fit dude who can certainly handle that. Aud- Audrey Arnas is another guy who I really like. Spaniard, second ranked Spaniard in the world behind John Rom. Yes, he's ahead of Sergio Garcia right now, and I think it's going to stay that way for a while. And then I'm going to throw out a few names. If you look at the Corn Ferry points list, maybe you follow the Corn Ferry tour a little bit. Brandon Matthews, MJ Duffy, uh, Taylor Montgomery, Eric Barnes. Four guys who are inside the top seven on the points list of the Corn Ferry tour this season. They're all playing great. Now, gr- granted, it's Corn Ferry great. It's not U.S. Open great. But look to one of those guys. Taylor Montgomery is a guy that I had on the radio show a few days ago. And he said, well, we go back to his story from last year was he didn't play the Corn Ferry event the week of the U.S. Open, made the cut at the U.S. Open, got no points for it, wound up 26 on the final points uh. list at the end of the year and missed his card because of that. Now back on the Corn Ferry Tour, said if he was lower on the list, he wouldn't have played this week. He wouldn't have even tried to qualify, but he is, used to caddy for his dad, Monty, in this event. He, he felt like it was his duty, his, you know, his calling to go out and play in this one. I, I really like the kid. I want him to play well. And I think he's going to be a really good player on the PJ tour next season. So watch out for those four names. If you're looking for guys, instead of just throwing in a qualifier, look at that corn ferry list that we've seen, whether it's Cameron Young, Mito Pereira, Davis Riley. We, we've seen guys come off the corn ferry and be very, very good players right away. So uh, all of that said, Len, let's make a lineup. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to say, Eric, yeah. you were talking about guys who had to like sell their clubs and stuff. Eric Barnes, I don't think he sold his clubs, but I think he was a guy who had to go work in a supermarket during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and and I'll say Audrey Arnos uh, was 30th, I think, at the PGA. So mm-hmm. uh, a good good pull by you there. All right. Where are we starting this lineup? You want to spend some money or you want to save some money to start? Yeah, you know, I'm not. I, we're going to have to get lower, but I, I'm not. I don't want to get super low. I, I really think I, I, my pick to win in a couple of places already. So I, I might as well just do it. I mean, I, you know, there's no pussy footing around or something. I'm going to go with Xander Shoffley. Yeah. Um, he's never done it. He doesn't win majors. He doesn't doesn't win almost anywhere. But his numbers just really shot out at me that he's just playing. St- you know, guys either score better than they play or play better than they score. He's playing a lot better than his results. And um, I just think he's going to be on the, on the first page of the leaderboard come Sunday with his driving ability. Okay. I like that. I don't want Xander to feel left out. So I'm going to put his Zura classic partner, Patrick Cantley on this team as well. <laughs> I, look, you can say what you will about Cantley at the big events, but in his last four starts, okay. He won the Zurich alongside Xander Shoffley. Second at the RBC Heritage, lost to Jordan Spieth in a playoff. Third at the Memorial a couple of weeks ago, and a miscut. He was way off the pace at the PGA Championship. Now, again, two ways to look at it. Is he just, you know, not going to ever play good golf at the big events? I don't think so. So it's a matter of, hey, something's going to change. I I look at it from a bullish position of, uh, I think Patrick Cantley is going to start playing his best golf at these big events. He's He's done it before. It's just been recent over the past year that he hasn't played well in these things 9200 i think is a great price um yeah i you know i i sort of in my own thinking and as i was preparing i, I sort of lumped victor hovland and, and patrick cantley together as just having a really bad run in in the majors but cantley's had some good finishes he was mm-hmm. top 10 in a, in a couple he, victor hovland we can explain away playing bad in the majors because he can't chip but patrick cantley it's just there's just it, it makes no sense. So that I think will end at some point. And this is week is as good as any. All right. I'm going to go farther down back to uh, my, my favorite play down in the sevens, Webb Simpson, uh, 7,400, you know, nice guy will fit in every nice price will fit in any lineup at $7,400. Uh, uh, just as an aside, I saw him on, on two different sports books, one at 60 to one and one at 110 to one on DraftKings <laughs> this morning. Go over to DraftKings if you uh, if you like uh, Webb Simpson and stay away from the the sixty to one book. But I, I just think you know a conservative play, get the ball in the fairway, then he'll be able to get the ball on the green. Um, 
I think he can, uh, you know, look at a top 25 or, or even a, even maybe a, a top 10 for Webb Simpson. If all yeah, goes well. I think you've convinced me on Webb. I'm going to move him up my rankings a little bit because I think that's a smart call there. And I, I'm looking at guys. We have just under 8,000 per man left to spend with three guys left to fill in the lineup. Uh, my sweet spot, which is 8,500 and just below going down to 8,100. I want one of these guys. I have a great feeling about Daniel Berger this week. I really think he's going to show up. I might not have said it before the Memorial tournament where he finished in the share of fifth place. He's been hurt. He's been kind of inconsistent watching him that week. I feel like Berger's got something back and I feel like he's probably got this one circled on his calendar for a while. 8,400. Let's plug him in. Yeah. Like that pick a lot. And uh, you know, very cost effective at 8,400. What do we have? What do we have left here? 15, four, 77 per man. So, all right. So, uh, all right. I'm going to take a little bit more of it. Uh, I'm going to sure. be the, I'm going to be the one at the Thanksgiving dinner to take a little bit too much. Uh, and, but I, I like Max Homa. It, you know, Max Homa is really fascinating to me. He's obviously a world-class golfer. He's on the PGA tour and to hear anecdotally you know, or just from listening to shows and podcasts that he has like a, a bit of a confidence level. Like I, do I belong here? I mean, you're on the PGA tour and, and I get it. Maybe standing next to Dustin Johnson, you may not think you're quite at that level, but it, it's really taken about four wins now uh, for him to really think that he really does belong and coming off his best major uh, again, plays great on the tough courses, not uh, a, a real wild player cons pretty conservative player i expect him to do very well again this week uh if i didn't take burger with my last pick it was going to be max homa so i'm completely on board with that we've got 7300 left to spend i'm going to leave a couple hundred on the table and i i'm going to for the third time i believe this podcast talk about the country club reminding me of marion and the guy at marion uh just happened to shoot 60 the other day and he's sitting there at 7100 it's been a weird year for Justin Rose. I feel like he just hasn't played much golf, um, but but I do think that he's absolutely absolutely peaking at the right time in an event where he can go out and win. There's some win equity there. Seventy one hundred for Justin Rose. There's a the lineup: Daniel Berger, Patrick Cantley, Max Homa, Justin Rose, Xander Shoffley, Webb Simpson. Uh, Len, it's hard not to like that unless you're dead set on a Scheffler, Rom, Rory, JT in the lineup. It's hard not to like these uh, six guys here. I don't think any of those guys play for live, do they? Uh, no, that's a PGA Tour lineup. Jay Monahan approved. <laughs> Stamp of approval. Nice. Oh, it's going to be a great week. Thanks to everybody out there for listening. Enjoy the 122nd U.S. Open Championship. Remember, you can find the Links and Locks podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast. Download, subscribe, rate, and listen to us every single week for Len Hochberg. I'm Jason Sobel. Good luck with all your DFS plays for this week's U.S. Open Championship. Here's hoping you hit the green. 